In this video, we're going to have a look at skeletal muscle cells. And up here on the board, what I've done is I've drawn sort of a real basic design. So these cells are really elongated. They're roundish, but they're a long cylinder. And there's, of course, a number of them that are in a given muscle. Let's move to the model and let's have a look at the model. And the model, you can see what we've done is just taken a little chunk out of the muscle cell so we can look inside, look at the outside and look at some of the details. So let's start. On the outside of a muscle cell, we actually have some uh, connective tissue wrapping around it. And since this is the cell that's being wrapped around, this is the endomyceum. There's two other myceums, there's the peri and the uh, epimyceum, but they're on a much larger level and um, there's another video that will cover that. So we have that and then we have the cell membrane. And this one we're gonna call the uh, sarcolemma. Now, as we look inside, let's look at the end here, the cut end, and you can see that there's a group of things here. Let's try and zoom in. These are basically the cut ends of things like actin and myosin, the contractile proteins that we're going to look at that make up something called the sarcomere. And if you look carefully, you can also see that there's a number of mitochondria skeletal muscle is very um, capable of good aerobic energy production so we have a lot of mitochondria in here now let's turn to the side and as we can do we can start to see some of the internal structure now look at one of these round bundles here if you look carefully you can see that there's this material the uh, sort of beige it looks like a uh, sort of a spider web that's running around them and you can see it really sort of covers them all the way around this is part of the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum and if you look right here the sarcoplasmic reticulum sort of widens out and then it's joined by this blue thing. Now this blue thing is a T-tubule. I'm gonna to turn to the side and we can see the T-tubule is actually the uh, membrane, the cell membrane that comes in and then spreads deep into here. Well, let's get back to here because what we have here is the T-tubule and some sarcoplasmic reticulum here, some sarcoplasmic reticulum there. And we're gonna have something called the triad. A triad is two sarcoplasmic reticulum, okay, and a T-tubule. Because you notice the pattern keeps repeating. If I have a T-tubule, I have sarcoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum, T-tubule, sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it's called a triad. And triad means, of course, three. So that is one of the main things. Now, just a little FYI, what do I find here in these uh, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum here? It's stored calcium, and that's part of the story for how do I get muscle contraction, which is in another video. Today, we're just going to look at some of the basic anatomy. Now, as we're looking here, we can see, you know, there are the cut end pieces of things like the actin filaments and myosin filaments. And if we look here, we can see once again, there's a repeating pattern that occurs all the way down. And this would, this would occur all the way down. You can see it happens up here. I like to think of these as sort of cars on a freight train, one car after another. And this is a sarcomere. And what's a sarcomere? It's the basic contractile unit of skeletal muscle. So let's carry on with some more features that we can see in this model. So we've had a look at the bundles of actin and myosin. We've had a look at what a triad is with the T-tubule to, uh, sarcoplasmic reticulums that are occurring on each side. And then uh, we had a look at how the sarcomeres will repeat themselves. Here we can also see a nucleus and these cells are multinucleated because a skeletal muscle cell actually comes from a fusion of a number of cells and each cell brings its nucleus to the party as it fuses and comes together to form this uh, muscle fiber aka a muscle cell, skeletal muscle cell. If we look up here, what the model is trying to show you is, hopefully you recognize it, it is a motor neuron and you can see it is myelinated. You can see those 
those wraps of myelin around here. So that's a myelinated segment. And of course, how this works is that if uh, a signal comes down the uh, motor neuron, it'll come down to the terminal end, and at the terminal end, it will release a neurotransmitter. And in the case, and this, by the way, this area is called the neuromuscular junction, where the nerve and the muscle interact. And the neurotransmitter that is released is ACH, acetylcholine. Now, what that does is it's going to open a series of gates, and these gates are basically a sodium gate, and sodium is going to rush in, sodium is positive, so I'm going to end up with a bit of a depolarization here. And that's going to set off a chain reaction, that if I have enough depolarization here, it's going to open voltage-regulated gates that are spread throughout the membrane. And very much like a, an action potential in a neuron, that is going to spread along the surface of the, uh, the, the cell membrane of the muscle cell. And eventually that signal, let's go here, we'll use this T-tubule, the signal will actually follow the membrane and it will enter down into the cell through the T-tubule. So let's turn it this way, you can see it a bit better, that the signal will come down into the T-tubule, it'll travel through the T-tubules, and that is the message that is sent to the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum to start to release calcium. And calcium is now going to flood into all these spaces, and calcium will interact with the um, sarcomere, because sitting on the actin, and this is highlighted in another video, is a regular, regulatory protein called troponin tropomyosin, and it will displace them off of the actin and basically allow actin and myosin to interact, and I'll start to get muscle contraction. So this is just a quick overview of the uh, anatomy of a muscle cell, also known as a muscle fiber. I have other videos that will talk about the sarcomere, how the contraction works, and go into a bit more detail as to the role of the motor neuron stimulating the actual contraction. Thanks for listening. If this was worthwhile, hit the like button and subscribe and follow the page.